Welcome back. You're watching Virginia this morning live right here on CBS 6. It's time to experience the magic of the kitchen magician. He's one of our favorite friends of the show, favorite chefs, and he's invited us into his virtual kitchen live this morning. And we welcome executive chef Azar Ariank back to our live show. Good morning, chef. Good morning. How you doing, Bill? I am doing great. Uh, we said, uh, folks that may have missed it right uh, before we got started, when we had you over for a quick peek there, look in your kitchen, that you said this was going to be easy. And I'm looking at the list of ingredients. It's three pages <laughs> long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, I mean, of course, uh, you know, the list of ingredients can be a little intimidating if you look at it from that perspective. But once we get down to the execution, it's fairly simple, as I always say. OK, so by the time we get to page four, <laughs> when we actually start doing it, yeah, we'll it's be, easy, we'll man. Good, okay, we'll all right, so yeah. you say. Let's get started. <laughs> Chef, okay. what inspired the shrimp etouffee right now? Well, I just said, you know what, I'm going to um, do something a little bit different. And, you know, I, in a prior, um, before I had my own business, I used to be a regional executive chef, and I spent a lot of time in New Orleans. And this is a very popular dish out there. And I said, you know, why not... Um, bring something back nostalgic that reminds me of the Big Easy's and, you know, do that on the show today. So that's what kind of made me do it. All right, so etouffee, uh, we, we don't have to spell it, but we're going to smell it, and it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the, fir the first thing we want to do is we want to start with this uh, roux. A roux, since you're speaking of spelling, that's R-O-U-X. Yeah, because it's roux extra right here, good. This right here is a deep, dark brown roux which takes about 25 minutes. If you see the color of it, it has a little slight redness to it and it's a dark brown. And I made this in a cast iron pan. To get it to get to that color takes about 25 minutes. So of course we don't have that much time in the TV world. So, so, I so what's did that in a roux, already. chef? What's a in roux is A roux is equal parts of butter or any type of fat, oil, and flour. Okay. And you, you mix it around and it starts off as a blonde roux. It looks like sand and then you continuously let it cook until it gets to this deep brown color. And what I'm gonna do now, I, I added the roux to the pan, and I'm gonna add what's called in um, Creole cuisine or New Orleans cuisine, the, the Trinity. The Trinity is onions, um, bell peppers, and celery. That's the Trinity that they utilize in, in Creole cuisine. If you are familiar with French cuisine, they use something called a, a mirepoix, which is onions, carrots, and celery. And you'll find that consistently throughout all of the dishes in, in um, you know, French cuisine. So that's the so French here, influence from New Orleans. Yes, definitely. New Orleans is a fusion. It's a combination of um, West African, French, Native American, and Spanish. So you got a, a melting pot of different cuisines going on down there. So um, that's why we get such a, an abundance of flavor. So here I'm going to add some jalapenos into that now. So oh. that's going to give us some, some nice heat. And I have some diced <clears throat> tomatoes. So we're gonna let those mix around here in this roux just for a minute. And normally you do this in a, a Dutch oven pan, and that's like a thick bottom pan, and you let it stew, because the word etouffee literally means smothered or stewed. And that's pretty much what you're doing to these veggies. So now that I have them well coated in the roux and they sauteed slightly, I'm going to go ahead and add some stock. I'm going to add some stock. This is a little bit of a combination of some um, shrimp and um, clam stock that I just put in there. So I got it on a high heat right now, and I'm going to let this stew down. So I'm going to expedite this part with the type of pan I'm using right now. I'm using a, a large pan with a lot of surface area, and I'm going to be able to expedite this process because it has a large surface area. Normally, you would stew this in a pot, and it would take about 15 minutes for it to get to where we want it to go. I'm going to cut that time in half because I have a pan that has large surface area. So you want it, chef, you want it to be thick. Yes, you want it to be thick. Okay. And chef, I'm going back to a question about the roux. Roux, I find kind of intimidating. Are they high maintenance do you, or do you have to baby them or are they just kind of, you get you know, them going you, and let them you do? Just have to, you just have to make sure that you're, um, depending on which one you're doing with this one, that's for the etouffee, you, it's, it's a little bit, um, a little bit more labor intensive because you have to constantly stir it around because if you burn the roux, then it's history. You can't do anything about it. You have to get discarded. So with this one, you have to make sure you continuously stir it because you want to get it to that nice, deep, dark brown 
color. Now, if, you know, if people are making like a, a bechamel sauce or something, you just have a quick blonde root where you throw your butter or fat in the flour and you just mix it around for a minute and then you add your liquids into it. But with this root for this particular dish, you have to let it cook for a good while. So you have to be over and on top of it. So the answer and is yes, it is working. The right type of <laughs> if you don't so keep your eye on it, it'll it'll be ruined. <laughs> oh, oh you, you got the on one line is still coming at us. OK, so now <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some Cajun seasoning to this. And this pretty much just consists of some smoked paprika, some cayenne pepper, has some garlic, onion powder, has oregano, thyme, salt, pepper. Um, speaking of time, we're down to about three minutes or just a little under oh, we'll that. We'll be fine. So. We're just letting this thing, we're letting it coast. I got it on a high heat. We'll be perfectly fine. In about another minute, I'm going to go ahead and add the shrimp to it because that takes about one minute to cook and then we'll still have a minute for plating. So this process right here is normally what you would do when it's in a, um, a, a pot stewing with a lid on it. But because we're expediting the process, I'm letting it not have a lid so all of that liquid can evaporate. The flavors were intensified, and it'll be right where we need it, just in time. And your right. outfit's going to, your jacket there's going to smell really strong. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I just threw a bay leaf in there and some fresh garlic. And I can already see the roux. The roux helps to thicken it up. So I just put the roux in there with it, and that helps to, you know, make everything bind together. That's when you get into a little bit of chemistry right there. So I could see it thickening up as we speak. So this is an easy dish. The toughest part about this dish is making that roux. That's the most labor intensive part because you're constantly over it, stirring it. And, um, you know, that's it. But, you know, I think with the, the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, we were able to get some great cuisine out of that whole deal. So. So when you're making this, uh, Chef, uh, you're making shrimp, but uh, I remember, I think I remember something about crawfish Yes, etouffee. that's another popular one, too. They do crawfish etouffee, they do chicken etouffee. So pretty much it's whatever you have access to. A lot of the times they'll have those seafood boils and whatever was left over at the end of the boil, whether it be shrimp or crawfish, and, you know, people will peel them back and throw them all together in a bucket and then Later on, the next day or what have you, they'll make an etouffee out of it. So there's no waste of any of the product. Isn't that funny? It sounds so fancy, and yet that's sort of a way to bring the leftovers together. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put the shrimp in there. I, go ahead, I want to put the shrimp in just now because it's thickening up beautifully just how I want it. And, of, of course, with the shrimp in there, it's not going to take any time at all to cook them. They take less than a minute. And I put in some 16 I'm going to ask shrimp. Jess's question, sir. Is that... Uh, Tails on, tails off. Oh, this one right here, this is this is tails on. Jess likes to tail off. But I like to put the <laughs> tail on because it gives a little bit of additional flavor in that in that liquid right there. That tail, it's like when you make a, a shrimp stock, use all of the shells from the shrimp to boil in the water with your, you know, with the other veggies to make it real fragrant. But those tails, you know, you can have tail off, but I think for the presentation and flavoring, it's a win win. But whenever I'm in studio, you know, I got tails off for you, Jess. <laughs> well, I'll let, we'll have to let it slide this time, definitely for the aspect of the flavor boost. We can leave the tails okay. on. I'll All just right. wear a bib when I peel them. Just let that butter melt. So we're pretty much right where we want it to be. We're going to do the plate up now. Azar, we're almost out of time here. Do we have a okay, so uh, we we plate time. at this There's point? Plate up now. Okay. Here comes the plate up now. So I got some um, nice rice cooked off here. I'm going to go ahead and add oh, yeah. shrimp in there. It's going to be beautiful. Flavors come together nicely. Yep. All right. So that's that. And then we're going right. to just garnish it. I'm going to take some scallions. And Asar, we're getting a wrap already. So we want to drool right on that final product. Oh, beautiful. look at that. Oh, yeah. That's Colorful it. Great and beautiful. job, Asar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Man. Wow. As always. And did you see that, Bill? Asar made that beautiful little rice round so it looks fancy and delicious. <laughs> Friends, we'll share this recipe with you. We'll post it to later today on WTBR.com slash VTM so you can try that at home as well. 
The Ask 5K Fund Walk is a celebration of the strength and courage of children with cancer and their families here in Central Virginia. 16th Annual Ask 5K Fund Walk is virtual this year and is coming up next Saturday, May 8th. Anytime, 10 a.m. Uh, virtual 5K and Facebook live stream program. Registration is $25. Hashtag more than a walk. For more information, visit AskCCF.org or on social media at AskCCF. Stay tuned. We'll be Great right back. Great organization. Yeah, we're going to pull stuff out of our inbox. Just can't wait. Nope. Got everywhere you are coming up in just a few minutes.